Hey everybody, uh, welcome back. Um, wanted to talk to you about one of the most important elements, and I will harp on this. One of the most important elements of being a good investor is understanding competition and the moat. Chapter six of my book uh, goes into this. Uh, so, so far, uh, talking together, we've gotten to a point where I think you could be comfortable talking about industries, companies within them, as well as uh, potential areas for investigation. Um, what, what I would suggest is you need to build um, a mental map of the supplier relationships uh, as well as the competitive relationships with companies, right? So from a supplier uh, relationship standpoint, a company like uh, McDonald's uh, obviously has the manufacturer of the buns, has the beef uh, producers, it has the cheese producers, Coca-Cola selling in the products. Each one of these companies can be an entire ecosystem of uh, raw materials, uh, energy, transportation, et cetera, that you could think about. But let's go back up to the company, McDonald's. Um, who competes with them uh, and at what points of the day? McDonald's has successfully entered uh, into all three uh, meals of the day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, as well as snacks. They're even in coffee and desserts. But you need to consider uh, the landscape of competition there, which is very easy for a consumer because all of us, one way or another, uh, touches McDonald's. Uh, whether or not uh, you, you eat there, uh, you can intuitively tell me that Burger King, Wendy's, Colonel Sanders, you know, K Kentucky Fried Chicken, uh, etc., compete with McDonald's on one level directly, as well as uh, other, other restaurants uh, competing uh, for your share of wallet. What is the moat? Uh, consider McDonald's as a castle, right? The analogy of moat that, uh, that Buffett uses so well. Um, the, the established moat that McDonald's has around the McDonald's castle. Is it advertising? Is it history? Is it consistency? Is it just sheer size? And is there a size at which competition cannot come into the market? Um, one could say that uh, at, at, at a certain point, McDonald's reached a critical mass where it was a competitive leader, but that wasn't always true. And uh, since McDonald's was established, you have seen other companies come to the fore. Wendy's is a very formidable competitor that was started uh, just as a historic anecdote by Dave Thomas, who had uh, been a uh, franchisee, a partner of, uh, of Colonel Sanders himself. Burger King started after McDonald's. Uh, the, these guys uh, actually uh, were, were ahead of McDonald's, I, I believe, uh, by, by just a little bit. Um, they just celebrated their 75th anniversary. Um, comment if, if I'm, I'm wrong on that, but they're, they're, they're neck and neck, right? But the point is that uh, when thinking about any business in which you're invested, uh, competition should be top of mind when, when establishing what their growth could look like what their margins could look like, actually how uh, they compete. Do they compete, on, do they compete on price? Do they compete on quality of product? Do they compete on speed? When McDonald's was originally introduced, it, uh, it competed with the typical burger stand on cleanliness and speed um, and, uh, and even on environment, uh, environmental factors. Consistent quality is also a thing that uh, fast food restaurants, especially McDonald's, um, pride themselves on. You can have McDonald's in Paris or uh, even in, in South America, wherever you go in the world and you know you will have a Big Mac that tastes like a Big Mac uh, elsewhere. Interesting things to think about. When you own a company, you should understand um, what the competitive landscape looks like. And uh, I cover that in chapter six. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me and there'll be more later.